Good morning. My name is James Hughes. My name is Kyler Madera. And my name is Nick Juhas. My name is Michael Lukatic. And today we're going to be discussing the production of biodegradable polymers, specifically polylactic acids, also known as PLAs. Before we look at what PLAs are, let's look at what biodegradable polymers are. Biodegradable polymers are like normal polymers, except they break down to the process of hydrolysis. We chose to focus on PLAs because they are currently used a lot now in the industry, and they show much promise for future applications. Currently, the most common use for PLAs is packaging, including plastic silverware, cups, and plastic bottles. This is a great use for PLAs because this means that plastic bottles can degrade in landfills where people don't recycle. In fact, in 2014, Americans used about 50 billion bottles of water. However, only 23% of those bottles were recycled. This meant that 30, 38 billion bottles of water were left in landfills and just, left, and just stayed there. If these bottles were made with PLA, these bottles would be biodegraded which would cause no problem with pollution and would reduce our environmental impact. PLA is also used in a variety of ways in the medical industry. For one, it can be used as a pin or a plate to help set broken bones back into place. PLA gradually breaks down inside the human body via the process of hydrolysis from water molecules already present in the human body. When this happens, weight is gradually shifted back onto the broken bone that is healing. Another application of polylactic acids in the medical field is the use of sutures. Instead of using normal sutures and stitches, doctors can use biodegradable sutures. These sutures have the same functions as the normal sutures and stitches, except they can be broken down by the body. They'll break down in a period of around 60 days, but it eliminates a, ho a hospital visit for the patient. Right. PLAs can also be used for tissue scaffolds. The PLA can be reshaped and reformed into a structure such as an ear. Tissue cells are then introduced to the structure and grow around the structure until it forms the desired part. This can also be implanted into the human body. This could be particularly useful because as the cells grow around the structure inside the human body, the water molecules inside the human body can break down the structure. Okay. Now that we discussed a few applications of PLA, we now move on to look at the overall process of how it is produced at a chemical plant. Reactor 1 is the first stage in this process. Starch is added in the form of corn, potatoes, barley, and molasses, which can pr produce sugars. Ammonia and bacteria are also added to help in the fermentation process. Waste products during this process are acetic acid, carbon dioxide, and ethanol. Once this fermentation occurs, ammonium lactate is formed. Here we have reactor 1. Starch is added in the form of a corn cob bacteria from my shoe, and ammonia in this cup. This is allowed to ferment, which forms waste products such as acetic acid, carbon dioxide, and ethanol. This also forms the main product which we're looking for, ammonium lactate, which happens to be in this cake cup. The ammonium lactate travels through the next two stages, which are the water splitting stages. This separates and extracts lactic acid from the ammonium lactate through the use of electrodialysis. This process uses electrical potential of the anions and cations to separate them. The water splitting method requires two stages. After the first stage, it's, the la ammonium lactate is still not split, but after the second stage, ammonia is removed as a waste and lactic acid is produced. Here we have ammonium lactate entering the water splitting stages and through electrodialysis we form ammonia which is a waste and useless and lactic acid. After lactic acid is produced through electrodialysis it is fed to reactor 4 which is the oligomerization reactor. Here we have the oligomerization reactor where the lactic acid is fed. Well, tough to get in. Water is excreted and pre is formed. In step 5, the pre-polymer from step 4 is fed into a depolymerization reactor. In this reactor, each monomer from the pre-polymer is broken down into each of its subunits. This produces lactide rings, which is essential to this process, being that it is the ring opening process. This forms the different stereoisomers of the lactide, D-lactide, L-lactide, and mesolactide. Each of these lactides has a different optical activity, which contributes to each of its different functions. Here we have our pre-polymer created from step 4. 
it's going to be fed into step five, which, I'll just, which is our depolymerization reactor. From that, we're going to create mesolactide. See the symmetry? It's a circle, so there's symmetry. And our DNL stereoisomer lactide. The three stereoisomers formed in the previous reaction are fed to the purification column. Energy in the form of heat is also added to the system. This adds enough energy to separate the mesolactide out from the DNL isomers. Liquid meso is then exit the process as a waste product and the DNL isomers move on to the next step. Here we have our D and L lactide from the depolymerization reactor and we feed them into a purification column along with the mesolactide from the depolymerization reactor. Heat is now added to the purification column. Heat transforms the mesolactide into a liquid meso compound. But we don't need it because it's a waste product. That leaves us with the L and D lactide. And this is fed into our next step. DNL lactides from the purification column are fed to the polymerization reactor. This is the reactor where the ring opening occurs. A metal catalyst is needed for this to occur. And there are numerous, numerous catalysts which can be used they include zinc, titanium, and tin. Tin is one of the more popular catalysts and is used in the form of tin octoate, also known as stannous octoate. Stannous octoate is added with alcohol groups to form a more complex molecule and, when added with the lactide, will allow the ester oxygen to attach. This will then cause the oxygen to lose its double bond and eventually open up into a chain known as polylactic acid, PLA. The stannous octoate is able to open up many lactide rings, forming long chains of PLAs. There are three types of PLAs created based on the lactide that was formed. Poly-L-lactic acid, PLLA, poly-D-lactic acid, PDLA, and poly-DL-lactic acid, PDLLA. A carboxylic acid with stannous octoate is an alternative method instead of using the alcohol. However, it will not produce as much PLA which is why it is not used as often. Here we have the polymerization reactor, which this is the ring opening step. Tin octoate is added with the L and D isomer, and this forms tin octoate bonded to polylactic acid. Although PLA is produced in the polymerization reactor, the stannous octoate that opened the lactide ring is still attached to the polylactic acid and needs to be removed. Stage 8 involves an extruder and pelletizer reactor, where sodium carbonate is added. The sodium carbonate is used as a catalyst to remove the stannous octuate. Both the sodium carbonate and stannous octuate are removed from the process and exit via a waste stream. The newly formed pure PLA is a liquid product that is put through a dryer where the PLA solidifies and then is able to be reformed into many different shapes dependent upon its specified function. The final stage is to purify the PLA. This is by adding sodium carbonate to help remove the stannous octoate from the PLA. And some sodium carbonate as waste products. The final product is pelletized into PLA. Once PLA is produced, it is reshaped to the desired product to carry out its function. Once it is done carrying out its function, it needs to be broken down. This is where biodegradability becomes a huge part in the PLA. Through the process of hydrolysis, PLA is able to be broken down. In the first step of the hydrolysis process, a water molecule attacks from the side of the carbonyl group right here. This bond then breaks as a negative dipole forms around the oxygen molecule. Because this oxygen is now negative, this bond associates and this hydrogen then attacks and a bond forms to form a hydroxyl group on this carbon. The leftover hydroxyl group then bounds to the carbocation bonding two hydroxyl groups to this carbon. Because the two hydroxyl groups are unstable bonded to this oxygen, this bond breaks. Because that bond breaks, this oxygen is now attracted to this carbocation. So this oxygen-hydrogen bond dissociates, and this oxygen, as a result, double bonds 
to this carbon forming a carboxylic acid group and forming two individual PLA molecules. Here we have a dramatization of a PLA bottle being broken down by hydrolysis. Gee, would you look at that? All PLA is a great product for current and future use. There are some cons to it. For instance, it's very costly to make and it emits a lot of greenhouse gases. In order to solve this problem, a Dutch study was conducted in order to examine the effects of different kinds of feeds that, that plants could use in order to reduce these greenhouse gas emissions and reduce the cost. The study evaluated cost, energy, consumption, and greenhouse gas emissions in the form of carbon dioxide. They evaluated the use of wheat and short rotation wood in comparison to corn and other traditional starches. What they found was that when using wheat, it costed less, it used less energy, and it, it emitted less carbon dioxide. For short rotation wood, it emitted less carbon dioxide, it was less energy intensive, however it was more costly. These are some things that companies need to take into account when designing a PLA plant. Do they want their customers to feel environmentally friendly? Or do they want more money for themselves? In the world of biodegradable polymers, PLA continues to be the, one of the most utilized biodegradable polymers today, with scientists continuing to look for more applications for the biodegradable polymer. The most common use to form the PLA is the ring opening polymerization, as we discussed earlier. This starts with a starch, which then can form with lactic acid, following with the lactide, and through stannous octoate, we can form the polylactic acid. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Mickey Haas. My name is Kyle Madero. I'm James Hughes. I'm Michael Lukatich. Thank you. Have a good day.